thank you for having me on. Uh, that's a very complicated question to ask uh, and answer. Uh, but the dust has settled the uncertainty that initially followed the marching of the Taliban into Kabul. That has settled. Um, but it has brought about with it a unique set of problems, which is the Taliban's vision of what they want Afghanistan to be versus the vision that the urban educated population of Afghanistan had for the country. And there have been uh, tussles, there has been tension, uh, there have been detentions, uh, torture, death, closure of girls' high schools. And uh, we're still here and we're still trying to uh, fight the good fight. We're trying to push the Taliban to realize that any coercive implementation of their vision is going to be short-lived. So let's talk about that for a moment. With that attempt to slowly, potentially even gently pressure the Taliban to perhaps adjust, um, you know, how long is that going to take? Is that going to depend on whether you are in an urban city, an urban area or a rural area? Uh, look, the problem is that in the past 20 years, the progress that was made was never trickled down to the larger population. So the lives of the rural population didn't really change. So for them, whether it's the Taliban ruling them or the Republic before it, they're indifferent towards that. Uh, and the only thing that has improved for them is that their physical security is guaranteed that there is uh, an absence of active conflict in Afghanistan. With regards to the urban centers, we have to understand that the problem in the past 20 years was that we are trying to impose uh, a different world on Afghanistan. So whatever comes out of Afghanistan, if it is organic, if it does come through dialogue, if it does come through incorporation of different views or something that is called synthesis of visions, only then will it be sustainable. And it's going to take long. It's uh, that no messiah is going to come down uh, no foreign imposed solutions are going to work. Silver bullets aren't going to work. So we'll have to keep pushing every day. We get up, we get out, we interact with the Taliban, we engage with them. We are forcing them to acknowledge us as stakeholders in the country. And ultimately, it's up to them whether they want this to be sustainable or whether they want to be a short-lived tyrannical regime such like Afghanistan has seen many of in the past few hundred years. Yes, yeah, so, but if they do not adjust, how would um, a takeover of the Taliban, what would that look like? Um, what we've seen so far is that pressure works, that they are concerned with the leverages that the international community holds, that they do want international recognition. And for that to happen, the international community has to instill within the Taliban the sense that any international recognition is going to be contingent on internal legitimacy. Internal legitimacy is going to be contingent on civil rights being guaranteed to the people. And it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be ideal. It's not going to be utopia. The Taliban did march in with their guns and tanks, and they are in power. The power asymmetry is in their favor. But we have to make sure that we get enough rights to start something, to be able to grow out of, and eventually the hope is, the belief is that justice always prevails and justice will prevail. And that should be our central tenant. So we're not giving up hope. Yeah. Tell us, though, what day to day life is like. Uh, we know that 90 percent of people we understand are living on the borderline of poverty. Humanitarian aid, aid is not properly resumed because of that legitimacy question. Look, Afghanistan was always an aid-dependent country. For the past 20 years, the international community, NATO and its allies, failed to build a sustainable economy. The alarm bells were already ringing before August 15th. We were projected to head towards a humanitarian crisis. And then Afghanistan was hit with the worst sanctions in modern history. Our sanctions were worse than the ones Russia faced for invading Ukraine. So you can imagine what that does to an economy that is overly dependent on aid and that aid is cut off and then you have those sanctions imposed. And right now, yes, the aid is resuming slowly, but at the end of the day, aid is not the solution. A stable economy is the solution. A stable political order is the solution. Right now, Afghanistan is in a legal vacuum. We don't have a constitution. We don't have a permanent government. And those things have to be started. The conversation has to start about a setup that includes non-Taliban, about a setup 
that is sustainable economically because we can't, I provide aid in Afghanistan. We've done a lot of work in the past one year, but every family I feed looks at me the next month. They want help again, unless they have something to look forward to in their lives. The grievances are going to keep increasing. Human suffering is going to increase. So again, beyond the grand politics, if everyone involved asks the question, do we want to limit human suffering? I think the answers will present themselves and the path will be evident. Yeah. So where do you see leadership emerging from the current situation that can potentially find those solutions? Look, the hopeful thing is that even amongst the Taliban, though we have the old guard from the 90s still in power, there are people amongst the Taliban that see the utility of the conversation that you and I are having. They do understand that international recognition is important. It's contingent on specific factors. And they understand that they have to accommodate people. The fact is that they are a majority, but they are a weak majority. And the fact that random common Afghans have to stand up and assume those rules. We have to take up spaces, something we've done in the past one year. We are on international and local media. We are in dialogue sessions. We are engaging with international stakeholders so that the Taliban can't ignore us. And at the end of the day, if they acknowledge us, if the leadership truly sits down with us and then honestly engages with the international community, there are solutions. It's not like it's a lose-lose situation and there is hope. We just have to work towards it and make this workable. So as I mentioned, you're normally based in, in Kabul. You, you, you're committed to the long term at this point? Look, my land is my motherland. The fact that they call it a mother means that it's like a parent. It's not something that I will desert. And it's something that I will fight for till my last breath. And I will fight for it nonviolently because, again, violence hasn't been a solution for Afghanistan. We've seen that in the past 40 years. And the fact is, those of us who can, who want to risk it, will have to stay behind so that we keep pushing, we keep making a ruckus so that at some point they realize that we cannot be ignored. We are with you on this day and uh, we appreciate your bravery and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me on.